Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. As we bring you the biggest and the best analysis in the world of entertainment. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Olua Oshoke. It's Hi. good. It's good. Hi. How you doing? I'm fine. Good. Why did you? I <laughs> that was annoying me behind the scenes, guys. So were you? Really annoying. So were you? Whatever. Are you done? Mm -hmm. Are you recording a voice note? I don't so know where to talking. Talk. I've, I, are you done? Mm. Okay, cool. Anyway, Hilda Dekuvo expresses displeasure over um, the way some well-meaning Nigerians are treating the vulnerable over palliatives. Sharing a photo of women holding up one tuba of yam for photo ops on her Instagram page, her caption read, quote, what do you call this? Giving, um, you should never do this to anyone just because you can. It is sad when people take advantage of the vulnerable as though life has not served them enough sad, sad juice. Coronavirus is a pandemic, not a tool. We all need support and if you can give it, go ahead. Do it and be grateful to God that you have been present and you have been presented an opportunity to be a blessing to another person. God will truly reward you for every gift you give to the poor. Yeah. I think I've talked about this in many of times in terms <clears throat> of giving. I, mean, I, mean, I don't remember what we're talking about, and I was saying that there's ways that you can share your the fact that you've done something really good, and I don't have a problem with it. And I mentioned the clauses to that was this, um, doing it really vulnerable. The first experience I had with that was actually with white people in my church, um, and it was... Oh, we're helping white people in your church in Nigeria. No, 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 abroad. Okay. Um, Let's and be clear. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. they can't try it in our own country. What? There's no space for that. <laughs> but abroad, where like blacks are the minorities, and it just happened that all the students today were black. So it, I said it's really feel like a project because it's like everybody come out and look at this blessing and God's gonna save it. Why? <laughs> it was wow. really cringe, and our faces were there and all that type of stuff. But we did need the help as young students you know, or whatever. So it's very easy to fall into that. And I'm going to be light on these people because I I know them personally. A lot of the times, it's um, as a lack of, as, 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 as a means of ignorance, not because You know they... the person that told them to raise Yam up? Who? In this story. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I thought you said you know yeah, the person. Know person. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I know people that do that, like okay. do this whole thing. And sometimes it's a, it's a slip up. Like they don't think about it deeply it's out of ignorance rather than like oh, i just don't really want to shame the person um but we still have to be held accountable to those things it would be unacceptable for whatever reason when you start to do that i think sometimes um i, I don't want to speak for everybody but i think sometimes it's because the reason why they're giving is not as genuine mm. and that's why it comes out like that because if you truly wanted to just help the person, it doesn't really matter what they, what you're giving the person. If it's a yam, more or less not asking them to pose and shine and all that type of stuff. Like I remember when people would go, we, we would go into missionaries and as well, and they'll ask us to take pictures with these with these kids. I found it very condescending as well. Like, oh, let's take pictures because you're, you're starting to, it starts to look like self gratification a bit. Like I'm trying to feel good about myself, and that's not really the point of giving. But I, I hundred percent agree with. Matilda on this one like you said um that, that was the word i was going to use self-gratification because at the end of the day a lot of people are doing these giveaways or the so-called giveaways for self gratification they want to make it look like okay i did it too what did you call it this morning um photo giving photo giving exactly because it's not really from the heart it's not because you feel like these people need help it's not because you feel that these people can do with this yam at this point in time or with this money it's just because you want to put it out there and boost your social media following and let people slide in your dm bros me too i need to me too do you understand like people just do most of these things for clout to chase clout and it's really sad because a lot of people are really taking advantage of the pandemic because if you go on social media, you see all sorts, even the ones that are using the, the, the ladies going on cloud to raise money for people, I still find it, uh, yeah, it's for a good cause at the end of the day, but I still find it very demeaning to use girls for that purpose. Do you understand? It's not like, because at the end of the day, you're increasing your following as well you're getting your name in the news as well. So it's not like it's for the sole purpose. The people that really want to raise money for a genuine cause, we don't even see them on social media. 
Do you mm. understand? And they do these things behind the scene and nobody sees it. And those are the ones that God will bless. Mm. But there are, there are people, mm. there are people. Why would you who, disagree? There are people who have used social media to raise a lot of funds mm. for good cause. And it's not, it wasn't just for sure exactly. or for anything. They genuinely picked up someone. No, then you're missing to... my point. I'm saying the people will bring down other people. Social media. That's what I'm saying. Okay, because I, I, it's very, it's very course, important to declare media. that because you do something publicly doesn't mean that it's bad intention. Mm. Just because you put it on social no, media, of course, doesn't mean that it's course, bad intention. But, of course, but like I always, I. It's and then my you also said that personal. if you if you give if you give um um that God will bless the ones that nobody that no one knows about. I don't we're think so. Chasing I think you think, mm -hmm. We're not chasing clouds. I, I chase completely clouds. disagree with that because there's people who don't put so their their givings on social media and still have bad intentions. If it. so, it isn't about like social media or what platform you use. So it's you about think people that are using it to chase clouds will still get the same blessing? But you know, you can think this it. person is chasing clouds, exactly. clouds, and then the person's intention is totally is different. Yeah, and unless that, unless like we say, like or we know, we, we serve know a God other's. that looks at the heart and not yeah like i was going to say at. we don't know each other's hearts and we don't know um why we're actually and what's this idea that god is going to bless people more anyway shall, let's not even go into that no don't go into that because i'm not a pastor <laughs> okay. but i'm sure your pastor will explain that better i don't have a pastor oh you can't explain it <laughs> really I you, can't, just, no. you just you just you just say no, because you've heard it no somewhere. not because i've heard it somewhere just because i know it is the truth because it's also in the bible that when you give your left hand the other hand you don't know what you've done it Do, does that there. mean that god will bless you more than the person who lets the left hand know that's I'm what you just pastor, said but i'm not a pastor for me to say that for a fact but, you, but i'm telling don't you say that it at all. no don't tell me not to say it at all because i believe in it okay well explain it's what my you believe in Ex it's well, you my this is why we can't this is why we are where we are because <laughs> <laughs> you have beliefs without Prove or backing you or intellectual what you, what you or critically believe. thinking no, about your beliefs. No, you just the belief believe is it because it is written yeah, your and pastor your has pastor said it read before. out that verse without reading out the whole But wait, chapter. I don't know. I, I, am I speaking to non-Christians? I, I don't understand. Because I believe that if you are Christians, you know the things I'm talking about unless you want what to act ignorant about? of it. Can we move on? <laughs> no. Unless you guys want okay. to act ignorant, at least I know that this picture ignorant. that Hilda Dokubo used to depict this um, um, issue we are discussing, I think is is the most horrible I've ever seen. Mm. Maybe I, I I don't search a lot on social media. I don't know, but this is this is just ridiculous. Having old women, um, I mean, maybe I don't think we can display the picture, but just imagine this as yam, and then they hold it up, and then pictures were taken, and it's just but I just want to both yam. That was just not fair. Whatever mm. the intention is, I'm not going to say the person did not have a good attention but i don't think that was, was really very, cool yeah. so um but guess how what? would be better unless you that also knows this person it might not have been this person's idea to take this picture some of these women are illiterate they're ignorant then they they count and they are very grateful when little things are done do you understand? I think they'll say, hey, yeah, the person, idea, the person, you think they'll say that? It's possible. It, did you see the picture? They were all uh, lined up. That was a pose. That was a pose. That was, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. yeah it could have been the women's idea. Yeah, they wanted to pose. But you used guys, it. Guys, I want to pose and use it. Even if it's a woman's idea, the person used it. Your foundation used True. it. Hmm. So That's have you... That's the sad part, though. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Kodak Black wants to meet with Donald Trump to share brilliant idea. He's he's proposing an in-prison meeting with the president. He went on to say the president can kill him if his idea is not worth anything. It's not every day you get this kind of invitation. <laughs> but um, when I was reading the story, I also saw the part because that was the first thing I saw. I was like, this story, this is the wrongest place to even get Donald Trump's um, attention. attention because it's not. No, Donald Trump is rarely on Instagram. He's mostly on Twitter. He's mostly but this on we Twitter. get on. It will definitely get on. It Twitter. definitely yeah. get yeah, on. Yeah, but um, at the end of the day, I don't know what Kodak Black's idea may be. Mm. But he said <laughs> he the said, idea has been. It chasing. seems like a setup to me. If you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What it's more like Bobby. Wow. Bo let me show you something. Let me show you something. <laughs> come, come. come <laughs> <laughs> and then the way he was promising that it's not going to be about my incarceration, my wrongful incarceration. Mm. I'm not going to talk about that. Neither it's not Rona. I'm just, let's just sit down. Let's come. Ah. Jack has solo. That kind of invitation is very, very suspect. Mm. Um, <laughs> it gave me a very like. And I don't want to insult his personality, Sha, but you know when somebody is on a lot of drugs and 
<laughs> and they start to really because i know people like that where they start to think they really have this like amazing because they're, they're on cloud nine and it sounded like a very drip trippy type of like tweet like he mm -hmm. was tripping and stuff but how would it would be nice to see just for i guess entertainment sake if donald trump actually hears him <laughs> and, i won't be surprised if he gives him and he could Donald actually Trump. just have a really good idea. Yeah, he could. He could. He could. Yeah, looking at Nollywood and how the drunk man is the one who <laughs> <laughs> the drunk man is usually the one who gives the best advice yes. in the whole cabinet of the chiefs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he could, yeah. So it's time for a quick break. But when we return, we definitely have more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dull, everybody feeling all right. Still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes I they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi. Like, sleeping early. Sleeping early. Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. I feel fulfilled, happier, and more blessed after going back to Islam from Christianity. And this is coming from actress Aduni Adi. In a lengthy post she shared on Instagram, she explained her journey and how she was worried about what people would say if she went back to Islam. She said Islam never left her and has taught her um, that we are judged on our intentions by Allah alone, what's within and not what you see. She went on to say she experienced Allah's greatness this time last year and she's looking forward to receiving her blessings this year and every other day afterwards. So I'm guessing she's talking about the Ramadan period, mm. right? Yeah. So what do you think? I think it's, um, it's nice that um, a family is open about religion because mm -hmm. um, she said she was brought up in a Muslim family. That's very rare. Her stepsisters. Mm. The, yeah, and I think that's her how... Her mom was Christian. Yeah, her mom, her stepsisters, but her brothers, her stepbrothers are um, Muslim, Muslim and they're practicing. And um, I like the fact that that's a family that it's not common in every family where you see people that, okay, if I'm a Christian, you have to go to church. If I'm a Muslim, you have to go to mosque and all of that. So I like the fact that there's that diversity and there's that freedom to practice whatever religion that you want to. And then um, a lot of people tend to put it out there like, if you're a Muslim person, you really can't express yourself the way you want to. If you're a Christian, you really can't. And then people tend to think about what others think about their personality based on your religion as well. But she was very open about all of this because I read it line by line and I was like, okay, you made sense. Yeah, you made sense. I said, you're making sense. Go on. You know that kind of feeling. That was what I got when I was reading a post and I was like, okay. So I got the fact that freedom of religion, do not care about what people think. Mm -hmm. And it's not by your outward appearance that really shows what your art is really about when it comes to religion. So I like the fact that she was able to retrace a step regardless of what step she took or what was religion she, she felt. Retracing step. Huh? Retracing step. Meaning... Yeah, she was able to retrace a step. No, no. <laughs> she retraced it back to what she wanted or to what she felt comfortable with. To still, mm, do you understand? Yeah, and I like the... that you used the word comfortable because yeah. what I got from her epistle was that... Christian, Muslim, or Islam, as you may like to call it, mm -hmm. there is no real difference. If you really understand what the doctrines are and how you're supposed to treat your fellow human being and also treat yourself. So um, God looks at your heart or your intentions that she says Islam taught her. It's also the same thing for Christian. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, um, what's the other thing she was saying? So basically, I felt like I'm reading something that a pastor or so a, a teacher of um, the Bible will also tell you. Those are not trying to twist it to 
line up their pockets anyway. Mm. That's how, how they will tell you to live your life and just be as liberal as you want to be. So I feel like it's about the comfort and you know when you grow up doing something, you're probably more comfortable in that line of religion and that mm. line of practice than when you get into a place where, I mean Christianity <coughs> can be confusing actually in this part of the world. You go into our CCG today, she mentioned them, that's what I'm mentioning them. Mm. She go into that place today, they tell you the hallelujah has to be bent. Mm. You go into um, the other fire yeah, tomorrow, so you have to be jumping up and be shouting it you know it it can get confusing and overwhelming if you're not well grounded in your own personal relationship mm. with god so if um being a, a a muslim is where she is well grounded and understand what they're doing then i think it's perfect for me mm. uh, i wish it was that simple but mm -hmm. i think it gets more complicated than that especially when you start to talk about the afterlife a lot of things that religion presents is the afterlife so Christians are probably wailing at this because they're thinking that, especially with ideas that I think if I mentioned that he supports that as well, that, you know, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, that you can't go to heaven. So mm -hmm. for her, for, for those, for that mentality, then it's not that she's done something really good. It's that they've lost his soul, rather. And then the Muslims will say the same thing that she's, the one well, she was. That's last, all of us will die. Shall. And that if she, Muslims will say the same thing too, that she, if she wasn't Christian, that she would lose her soul. So I, I, I would like to agree that it was, it, that the core of religion should be about how you treat other people. And I think that should be the mm -hmm. ma main, most important thing. And that's how I value people as well. I don't really care what name you mention, Allah, Jesus, whoever, as long as your heart reflects positivity and stuff i've seen people who like bask in religion and are really terrible, terrible people. people and i've seen people who know nothing about jesus don't care they're not and interested the in islam people. and they're the best people so for me i'll take that over you just mentioning your names mm. um i feel this girl on so many levels because i've had um a very interesting journey with religion as well like i've gone out of raising church i was almost marrying one pastor like this well i was really really like so you, church church. Like <laughs> yeah. you almost Different. married one pastor uh, very close <laughs> like pastor mrs you will fit i family. wouldn't i really wouldn't Mommy, you. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> um and my family is really like christian and everything but i've had a very different walk with christianity i think mm -hmm. i'm closer to god when i'm not christian in the traditional sense where like going to church and identifying mm. as that and because i think my 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 values are very twisted like some parts i really agree with and some parts i don't and it's kind of fluid and that's why i don't really think that name really labels well for me but it is so hard to say that out loud in certain places i'm sure now people's ears are already picking they're already picking up the bible waiting for me to come, come and convert me back into that place that's the instinct and i think not everyone has this mindset where it's all like mm. positive and oh we accept you some people have like cut me off some people still like can't have a conversation with me until I go back and mention it that I'm a Christian and things like that. So I understand where she's coming from, that it's not that rosy and she is under a lot of persecution from all from all areas really. Muslim, if she's not Muslim enough, Christian because she's no longer Christian. Um, but I think people need to really start thinking about giving other people the choice to live their lives. And I, I, if there's anything I want to say on this topic is that not everyone, your aim of, of sharing love shouldn't really be about, about convic converting the person. Just mm. share your love. Mm. Well said. Okay, that's well said by almost Mommy Gio. Please go. No. Okay, Gio. so um, Rick Hassani is um, starting the line of oh. conversation. And he's asking, so if you fall in love in this quarantine period, is it original love? If you fall in love via chatting with someone you just met during this quarantine period, could it be real love? Discuss! He has given us homework. Yeah. <laughs> I find this very, very shallow. Ah. No, yeah. what there's nothing to find shallow here. If okay, let's ask a let, let, question. Let, let, what are you? Discourse. What are you oh, finding okay. shallow yeah. about this exactly? Like what bit? The question itself, or the fact that people can fall in love? Yeah, the fact that you even have to ask me this question. So what is that? it that like you don't think they can or that they can't? I think love, as in when you're talking about falling in love, it's way deeper than a lot of people tend to express it. Now, how can you say you fall in love with somebody over via chatting? Do you understand? Now, that's the first question. Do you think love can really be real via chatting? Okay, that's my question. Discuss. Via chatting, we have never seen, and I'm saying I'm deeply in love with you. I think it can. You think it can? I think it can. So if you think it can, right, then why this question in the first place? It wants you to Sani? discuss now. If it's no. a, like it's trying hey, to I'm get... not me. I'm discussing in my own way. Calm okay. down. Ah, okay. Yeah? Okay. Now, what I'm trying to say is that <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> I heard that. 
I think it's, I think it's totally allowed for people to express their love in whichever way they want to. Either it's via chatting, is there? But a lot of people will say because of the quarantine period, there's the lockdown. A lot of people are probably bored, and that's why they could, they will probably say things like "I love you" just to have someone on their side right now. But I think love is something is 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 distinguished to each person. Do you understand? The way I fall in love might be different from the way you fall in love. Whichever way, let people just be in love. I think it evolves. Um, that not everything, because the, the problem with this question or the reason why it's not palatable to a lot of people is because there's no, there's no physical aspect to it. Um, but I think that comes, obviously that has to play out some at some points. But I don't think you need that to get to the love point. I think if they started talking and then they bonded and fell in love, that the physical can just make it deeper, but that doesn't mean that it can't start until they see each other physically. Mm. Um, it's about communication. It's about bond, and it's about Connecting connection. You don't need to be physically present to do that, especially in 2020. Let's say they had to write a letter and send it and then get it back in two weeks. I'm like, yeah, you need a long time to fall in love. But where things are so instant, it's just so possible. All you need to do is share who you are, let the person get it, accept it, and give you back that that same energy and you can actually bond bond to a point where you start to need each other growing to grow um into falling in love with each other and i think it's very possible is it should you be worried that this is just out of boredom because there's nothing else to do absolutely mm -hmm. but i think you can fall in love yeah definitely. and i think there is no set rule it can happen and as much as we are saying oh with boredom and cool there are people who have found love mm. in this period yeah. and they're basking in it they're having conversations yeah. however for me love is a commitment a decision to commit mm -hmm. so at the end of the day if this period is so nice and then you meet her mm -hmm. and you are still not committed to this person it will still end up being another field relationship whether it's dead via chat or it's dead physically okay. so um a lot of things can come out of this conversation i wish i had more time um to discuss it but i mean try your luck don't cover it up and call everybody bored yeah. for chatting you up i think that's why I said it's distinguished to every every individual. It's not something that we can just define. All right. That's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And do join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Also, you can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. Thank you, as always, to go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Olua Oshoke and the entire production team. Thank you for watching. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please stay home and stay safe.